pumped about today. I've got my first golf game in like eight months uh, today. The game's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be fun getting outside. And uh, a few of my Carrot team members are actually in it as well. Sean on my team is on the board of this charity, and uh, so we're in the tournament. So that's going to be pretty fun. But uh, I want to give you a quick recap on my last uh, couple weeks, actually, in business, entrepreneurship, life. And also, one huge takeaway that I had uh, surrounding myself with some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world for two weeks. And I'm talking, I was in Toronto for four days with people who have sold companies for literally almost a billion dollars. Um, I was in Boise for people with people that have were broke 18 months ago. They're running companies that are doing $35 million now. And it's crazy, right? Like I think we all see this journey. We see the journeys from the outside uh, for these people that are successful. It could be my journey that you see. It could be, you know, someone else's that you see. And it might seem like it happened really quickly. It might seem like, you know, all the steps are these exact steps. And if you do the same thing, the, the same results will happen. And I kind of want to give you a little glimpse behind what I see uh, in my own life, in my own business. And I think a lot of it will relate to you, whether you're a real estate investor, whether you're a real estate agent. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You could be selling, you know, widgets. You could be a local company here in Roseburg, Oregon, if you wanted to. This is going to apply to everybody. Um, so... Three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, um, I got back from vacation with my family in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was down there for 10 days with my wife and my kids. I had an amazing time. And I met up with some great, great people down there. Some clients, Dave Payerchin, Tim Bratz. There's some amazing, amazing investors and clients down there and other awesome people too. And um, that was great. Then I came back and last minute trip to Toronto, Canada. Never been to Toronto before. Uh, if any of you guys have been to Toronto or live in Toronto, it's an amazing city. I'd love to go back. I didn't have enough time to really explore it. But I went there for a mastermind and I also actually hired a new coach. Uh, this coach's name is Dan Martell. Uh, he's a guy who's been very, very successful in, in business in the software world. I'm wanting to kind of, you know, beef up my my skills on how to be a better CEO. You know, frankly, as we're growing this company here at Carrot, we we're going through the same growing pains you guys are in your businesses. Um, you know, we're hiring lots of people um, to, to help really fulfill our promise to our clients and to, to really get even better at delivering an amazing experience. And that's fun and it's challenging. But up in Toronto, there's some really, really cool things uh, that happen up there. So we did these lunches and dinners with the whole group that there's about 12 or 13 of us. And then Dan also brought in these founders and he calls them founders lunches. And we had a chance to eat lunch with amazing people just as their peers. These people weren't up in front teaching. They were just sitting right next to us having lunch with us for 90 minutes. And one of the guys was the first guy in Canada that had a Tesla. And uh, first guy in Canada that got a Tesla. He had the company called audiobooks.com, sold that for tons of money. And there's some really interesting things that came from that conversation all the way from you know, when you're building a team, I think a lot of people in business build a company or build a team with the intent of exiting, with the intent of having some sort of event that makes it so they aren't working with that team anymore. Now, it, it, it's not necessarily that you don't like working with that team. It's usually that you think that on the other side of that event, on the other side of selling all of your real estate portfolio or selling your business or on the other side of working your way completely out of the business so someone else is running it, it doesn't always look the way that you dream that it would look. And with this guy, his name is Sanjay, um, amazingly successful guy, has a lot of money in the bank now, but he said, man, I wish I didn't sell my company. He said, because I spent all those years arranging this amazing group of people, this amazing group of leaders, and the second that I sold the company, I didn't have them to work with anymore. I didn't have them to work with more. I had to go build my own new team from scratch. And he said it was hard. And he goes, man, the thing that I wish I would have done is built an amazing team that like he did, and then use that team to go after new opportunities that were interesting to him. He said the business was really profitable, so that wasn't the issue. Uh, he was just looking for something new, and a good offer came along, and he took it. So that was lesson number one, as he said, man, he's like, don't sell the company unless you have to sell the company or you're just absolutely dreading what you do. He said, really build an amazing team that you could see yourselves tackling new issues, new challenges, new businesses together. You build systems, you put people in place so your primary business is running and that team or parts of that team go out and execute on new things. And that was a big thing for me. Um, even though we don't have any aspirations or dreams on selling care anytime soon, I absolutely love what I do. It's hard. It's challenging. Um, we've got some big things in store, but I love what I do. So I have no reason to sell it. We're profitable. It works, right? Um, but 
there is always those things. I've had a few people offer me a lot of money to buy carrot. And uh, it makes you stop for a, a split second to think about it. But the one thing that I keep on thinking about is like, if I take the money, what else am I going to do? I really enjoy what I'm doing. And I don't feel like we've even scratched the surface on the impact we can make on, you know, the tool set that we can build on the results we can help our clients get. And also on getting our core values out to the world so you guys can go amplify the world uh, even better. Okay. So that was lesson number one, build an amazing team. And if you ever get to a point where you feel like possibly selling or exiting, or if you're planning that now, work on building a company that's sustainable and profitable with an amazing team where you guys can then pivot and tackle new opportunities if you want to. Okay. So lesson number two was, um, man, this is one that I've learned before, but it really cemented it when I was around these people. There was one of the founders, uh, one of the co-founders of a company called Eloqua. And Eloqua was a big company. They sold for hundreds of millions of dollars to a bigger company. And we had dinner with that founder for, he was probably there for about three hours in the last night that I was there in Toronto. And we had a chance to chat with him about business and entrepreneurship and work-life balance and work-life integration and all those things. And one thing that came from his conversation that was interesting um, versus some of the other founders we had talked to that were all very successful is with him, you know, he really from the start focused on work-life work life integration and him and his wife almost had a contract. You know, they almost had like a verbal contract where they said, this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to be. And if the business gets in the way, it changes, you know, the, the, the business has to change. And that's something I see so many of us falling into that trap, myself included at times where we, we come up with this excuse saying, you know, we're, you're working hard, you're working long hours, or you have to reschedule this thing with your spouse. And it's a, it's a business excuse. And it's like, you know, I think we, we, we give ourselves a pass because we say we're doing this for our family. You know, we say we're doing this for our family. And at the end of the day, many of us get past the income threshold where it's really for our family. Okay. It's not for our family anymore. Once we're past that income threshold, what is that income threshold? You know, it could be 10 grand a month for you. It could be 20 grand a month. It could be a hundred thousand a month for you. I don't know what your income threshold is that will enable you to live the lifestyle to be truly happy. Now, most people can live the lifestyle that will enable them to be truly happy for under 20 grand a month, um, before tax. Okay. So that after tax, let's say 15, 12, 15 K a month. Now, if you want the, the private jet or any of that crazy stuff, that's kind of more ego driven. And unless you, unless, unless the private jet is like straight up to save you time because you're out there working big deals and your time is worth so much money, that's like the stratosphere kind of wealth, right? And the private jet at that point is valid. It's you actually lose money by flying um, commercial. So private jets at that point are amazing. But what about the Lamborghini or the Ferrari when you're only making three or four hundred grand a year and you think that you need that? Well, that's really ego driven. Not saying anything's wrong with that. I'm just saying recognize it for what it is. Because if you're working those extra hours to feed the ego instead of, instead of to feed happiness, I can almost guarantee you that whatever relationships you have are going to suffer, that your business may suffer because you're, you're driving after short-term wins possibly in order to get those short-term rewards. And um, happiness, I, I know people with those Ferraris. I know people with those Lamborghinis. I'm not saying that they don't make them a little bit happier, but I can tell you that those don't bring happiness itself. Uh, oftentimes, those big assets like that, um, if you have them in your crotch or whatever it is, actually adds more stress because now you've got to deal with it. You've got to, you know, it's always on your mind. How do I make sure to protect this? expensive asset that I got. So that was one thing that this guy, he had a contract with his wife and this is a, a guy who has hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank. And he said, basically, you know, me and my wife said, we're going to go on date nights, these nights all the time. We said that this is always going to happen. And we said that this is always going to happen. And we're never going to forgive those. Okay. And I really challenge you and I'm challenging myself as I'm saying this as well, because my wife and I, we need to get in some of those better habits too. I'm challenged I'm challenging you as a founder of your business or a person who wants to found a business is to look at yourself and your habits and make a contract with those that are important to you. Okay. That's something that, that, uh, that I am wanting, needing, and going to do uh, with my own wife here in the next week or so is really sitting down and going, you know what, babe, what is it that we want to make sure that are those non-negotiables for our relationship? And I know I've talked about non-negotiables for business before, but one thing I have not done, and this is something that's, it, it's kind of like, like, you know, a head smack, it smacks you in the square between the eyes is going, man, why have I not done that 
for my relationships? Why are there not non-negotiables for relationships? So funny thing, immediately as I'm saying, talking about Ferraris, a Ferrari drove, drove by, which does not happen in Roseburg, because I don't know where that person's from. That's funny. Um, so write those non-negotiables, create those non-negotiables, have those hard conversations with your spouse. Have those hard conversations with the people that you care about and say, you know what, as I grow this company, there are some things that are gonna give and take. There are some times where I've gotta really buckle down and put my head down and get to work, and I am doing that for family. Some of it's for ego, you gotta recognize that. That's not a bad thing, but you have to recognize it. And some of it's for just achievement. You know, you wanna prove to yourself and to others that you can do great things, right? And those aren't bad things, we just can't let those control us. And that was an amazing takeaway I had from him, the co-founder of Eloqua. Now he has a new company, which is a really, really cool company. Um, another thing that uh, popped up in that same trip to Toronto, then I'm going to transition to Boise with a really huge takeaway that, that could completely change the way that you scale up your business, any business, real estate agents, real estate investors, um, software companies, uh, local cabinet sh shop, it doesn't matter. Okay, that one's going to come next. But um, the Toronto one, we had a chance to visit this company in Toronto that has been like the number one place to work for in Canada for like five or six years. A really, really great company, three or 400 employees. Um, they have a great mission, they have an amazing culture. We actually got to be there during their, they call it nine at nine. It's their kind of team huddle at nine in the morning every single weekday. They get to get together for exactly nine minutes and start the day, which was really cool being a part of that. But one really amazing thing is we had a chance to sit down with the co-founder of this company. They do about 50 million bucks a year is there was kind of this interesting dichotomy, you know, where you, you, you look at a founder of a company or an entrepreneur or whatever it is that you may really look up to. And then when you ask the hard questions and put the guards down and learn really what's going on and what it took for them to get there, it's interesting that oftentimes it doesn't match up with what we thought. So this person is someone who I look up to now. I didn't know him before, but I do look up to him as a founder and as a person who really sticks to his, his laurels and his convictions around culture and how you can use a business to impact community. He bought the local uh, elementary school that was like 100 years old. They renovated it and they have 100 or 200 employees in that school. They're looking to buy another building uh, downtown and they're really changing their community. And that's something that we're looking to do here in Roseburg is how can we use our business? Even though we're a software company and even though the majority of our clients are not in this area, um, even though that's a boring business, like software is boring, leads are boring, right? How can you make your business interesting and fun and impact your community? Because at the end of the day, we can have as many digital friends, digital, um, you know, acquaintances, uh, digital comrades as we want to have. But if we're not meeting with people locally and shaking hands and actually impacting the place that we live, I know for myself, um, it's not very fulfilling. I've been through that before. And a lot of real estate investors that I meet, you know, they'll, they'll network with people on bigger pockets and over Facebook and over the internet and wherever it is. And that's amazing. But what about the people that are locally with you? Okay. It doesn't have to be other real estate investors. It could be, you could be the person that starts the local entrepreneur group, just like we did. You could be a person that joins one that's already in existence and meets other people that are other types of entrepreneurs, you know, local auto mechanics that want to be a uh, part of the change in the community. It could be people who are you know, people who have marketing agencies or whatever it is. And you'll find that it's amazing the people you meet, the synergies you'll have that you never would have predicted because you're always out there looking just for real estate people, right? So I really, really urge you to look outside of real estate or outside of whatever type of business you're in if you're not uh, an investor and you're just a part of our community and look at it and go, okay, how can I meet other amazing people that might not be in the same line of business but want the same things for our community that are challenging themselves with the same things as an entrepreneur? And I challenge you to... After you write those five non-negotiables or have non-negotiables with the people that you care about, about the non-negotiables with them and you and your relationship with them as your business grows, I want you to then go figure out how can I integrate in my community more? Because the you know you can make as much money as you want to make, and you can have, you can host masterminds where people fly in from out of the area, and those are amazing. Do it if you can. But what about that local mastermind? What about helping to be a, a, a part of solving? the things in your community that you complain about and other people complain about. Be a part of solving that. Okay, I challenge you on that. I want you to do that. I want you to take pictures. I want you to let us know what you're doing and how we can support you. We just started a giving program here at Care where we're giving away um, a percentage of our gross revenue, not profits, our gross revenue each and every quarter. 
And this last quarter, we donated almost sixteen thousand uh, dollars to causes local to our team members that matter. Okay, we we donated shoot almost seven thousand dollars to a local uh, charity that is doing amazing things with youth. And these youth are are ones who are some of the the youth who you know, they're the most disadvantaged. Okay, they're the most disadvantaged in our community. They have terrible home lives. They might not even be going to school. And this charity is going in and teaching them these important life lessons through bicycles, through bike building, bike repair, things like that. It's called Umqua Valley Bicycle Outreach. And their van was getting ran down. And um, we offered to to chip in and pay for half of it if they could raise the other half. So, you know, we're going to be donating over $7,000 actually to them to buy this new van so they can go out there and actually... Um, you know, empower more youth and uh, take their mission further. And that's amazing. What can you do and how can we support you in that mission? Okay. Because you can start to make a ton of money and there's a little bit more uh, uh, noise right now because I'm on the highway now, but you can make a ton of money. You can have a ton of money in the bank account. You can feel so amazing about yourself and feel so cool when you walk into the room that you're sitting there comparing yourself. And I've done this and sometimes I still do it and I catch myself where you walk into a room and you go, I'm probably... I probably have more money than anyone in this room, right? And that's a trap. That's an ego trap, and I hate it, but it's easy to fall into that. So you could do that. You could fall into that trap and chase money for the sake of chasing money or for the sake of the game. That's interesting. That's fun. But what's fulfilling is going out there and making real impact with that money, making real impact with their time. Let's say you don't have money. Let's say you're struggling for money. Let's say you're, you're, you're still trying to make real estate or business work for you. That's when I urge you even more than ever to go out there and make that impact now. That's when I urge you more than ever to make sure that you are doing that now because if you don't do it now, I can guarantee you that you're not gonna do it when you have money, okay? So find those things you can do now, even if you don't have money, but you got a little bit of time. Squeeze out that extra hour, two hours, three hours a month and find ways to engage with people in your community. Okay, now let me bounce to Boise. So I got back home, uh, flew back, I think it was Sunday, uh, hung out with family the next couple days, and then I flew to Boise on Wednesday. This was last week, Wednesday, from the time I'm recording this right now, okay? So I was in Boise from Wednesday through Saturday, and that was out of Mastermind. So one thing I've done this year is really invest in myself in hiring coaches, masterminds, things like that. I mentioned that on my last podcast on episode 100. But with this mastermind, this mastermind is people from all over the sphere. I mean, I'm talking all different types of businesses, relationship experts, uh, people who are selling widgets on Amazon, uh, people who are selling information, real estate investors that are coaching people, real estate agents, or Krista Mayshore, one of our, our, our agent care clients, the number one a real estate broker by volume in Brentwood, California. She's a client of ours. She's in that mastermind. Amazing group of people. There's so many great takeaways there. I'm going to give you two takeaways from that that you can implement and deploy today, right now, that can change the way that you look at life, okay? The first one was literally within the first five minutes of this mastermind, uh, amazing gal and her husband, Stacy Martino, they're just so great. I mean, they're they're amazing entrepreneurs. They struggled to find a way to make the thing work. They made it work, and they're crushing it now. And that's so cool seeing that journey because what so many do, what so many people do, like when you look at, I'm going to use this word very, very um, cautiously here. Okay, I'm going to use this word cautiously because I've seen people talk about losers and winners, right? And yes, this world, I don't believe this world is a zero sum game. I don't believe that there there have to be winners and there have to be losers, that if I win, someone else has to lose. I feel if I win, I can uplift and bring other people with me, right? But there are truly, I think there are winners and losers out there. Winners and losers is not the result, it's the mindset. Okay, you're not a winner or loser based on the result you got. It's on the mindset you tackled it with, okay? And with, with Stacy and her husband and several others too, this one couple, they're in their, their early 20s, they could barely pay their rent uh, 18 months ago and they're literally gonna make $30 million this year serving tons of women in their program called Lady Boss. And they're teaching women how to lose weight, how to have confidence for themselves, how to really support themselves and support their community and be healthy. And it's amazing the movement that they've created. And the mindset that they both took was even though they were losing, they were losing time and time again, they couldn't figure out how to make their business work. This thing didn't work, that thing didn't work. Um, They surrounded themselves with the right people, first of all the right mastermind, the right people around them that were uplifting, not negative. And then they said, okay, I know other people can make this work. Other people have made this work. If they can make it work, I can make it work. Okay, there's no law out there saying that I can't do this. 
if they did it, they're my four minute mile. I'm going to make this thing work. Okay. And they did and they stuck through it. They found the right process. They've joined the right mastermind. They got around the right people and they executed and executed and executed the things that didn't work over and over again until they found the things that did. And then it popped. And then their business did their first $100,000 a month. And then it did their first $200,000 a month. And now they're doing $3 million a month, $100,000 a days, which is crazy. So if you want to really up-level your mindset and go from, you know what, I think I want to do this to really figure out how you can impact more people, surround yourself with those right people, okay? That was kind of an offshoot tangent. That wasn't the lesson I was wanting to uh, dive to. So within the first five minutes, Stacy said this thing. She said, put out your, your uh, two hands. Put, put your two hands out in front of you. And I want you guys and gals to do this right now, unless you're driving. If you're driving, don't do this, okay? Wait until you're done driving. But uh, put your two hands out in front of you with your palms up. And basically what she said was, in life as entrepreneurs, we're definitely a, a unique breed. Okay, we're a unique breed. We do things that the majority of people do not want to do, never will do, and, and may or may not have the capability to do, but they likely won't stick through it. Okay, there's something wrong with us as entrepreneurs. And as my friend Alex Sharfin says with the Momentum Podcast, I got to hang out with him a bunch this last week, one of my mentors, amazing guy. Uh, what Alex Sharfin says, is basically the entrepreneurs are the evolutionary hunters of today's time. You know, if you look back 1,000, 2,000 years ago, longer than that even, we're the ones that were probably going out there and hunting the food. We're the ones that were bringing back the spoils so the rest of the village can then eat, right? We're the ones that have the ingenuity, figure things out, take those risks, go out there, figure out the way to get the animal or whatever it is, and we bring it back, okay? Now, we don't have to do that anymore uh, for the most part because we have grocery stores and things like that. I insanely respect hunters who do it the right way and go harvest their own food. I, I love that. But we don't have to do that anymore. So what do those evolutionary hunters do now? Well, we become entrepreneurs. We're the ones that go out there and use that ingenuity and our creativity and we go solve those problems for other people. We go out there, hunt and bring back the spoils to our families, our communities, our businesses, our team members. Okay. So what she said was we think differently and oftentimes what we do is we lump every single person in our lives in the same bucket. We have our entrepreneur friends that whenever we're around them or you listen to this podcast, you listen to other podcasts that fire you up, we're so empowered. We're like, oh my gosh, that fires me up. Like, I can't believe other people do not think this way. Like, how does my buddy Joe, who's stuck in his job that he complains about every day, how does he not do this? How does he not take action on this stuff? Or we talk with friends or family and, you know, the only conversations we want to have are about business and about success and we want to, like, coach them up and we feel, oh man, it's almost like you almost kind of feel sorry for certain people, which is a bummer where we go, man, if they only took these steps and knew these things or did these things, their life would be so much better. You know, I'm guilty of that. I do it all the time. I'm always thinking that I'm going, man, if only this friend who doesn't really like his job and he feels trapped, if only he would like just do these things that I could lay out for him that I've even laid out for him before he would be happier. Or if only my mom or my dad or my brother or your sister or your whatever it is, your spouse, if only they'd be more motivated. If only they would finally write that life list because I've done it and it's empowered me and why aren't they doing it? Is there something wrong with them? And what Stacy said was, that's on us, that's not on them. Okay, that's on us, that's not on them. We're different. And I'm not saying different in a we are better than them way. I'm saying we're different as in we are those evolutionary hunters. Not everyone can be that evolutionary hunter. So with those two hands you have out, now make this mindset shift. On your left hand, that's your bucket of what she calls the seventh power people. That's the people that are your seventh power. Those are the people like us in this podcast. Those are the people in your masterminds. Those are the people that want to talk business, want to talk um, you know, achievement, success, impact. Those are the people that really wanna make massive things happen in the world that you surround yourself with. When you're around those people, Talk business all you want because that's probably all you want to talk about. Talk impact. Talk that stuff around those seventh power people. When you're around your friends, family, people that aren't like us, people that don't have that same mindset, it's not a negative. It's not something, it's not a, a negative tick mark on them at all. We need very varying types of people in this world. Okay? If all of us were like this, the place would be crazy. So with those, the, with those friends and family that aren't like that, Stop forcing those conversations on them. Okay, just talk with them. Talk about what they're interested in. Find out what fires them up and just talk about that. 
for those times, hold back on being the person that's pushing and shoving our message of entrepreneurship, of how this life can be amazingly better if you can, if you would just latch into this mindset. You know, stop hammering that stuff down people's throat. And that was a big lesson for me because like I said, when I'm around certain people, I, I kind of do that because I think that, man, if only they would transition over to this way of thinking, like life would be so much better for them, but it wouldn't be because that's not them. Now, what we can do is I don't think we should give up on them because some of those people, of course, may be people who could grow into that. Some of those people may be insanely served by the message you have to deliver to them. So that's where we're just an inspiration for them by action, okay? The things that we do, the ways that we act, inspire them. And if they then start that conversation with us, awesome, game on, let's change their life, okay? So that's our job. You have your left hand, it's your seventh power people, have those conversations, make sure you have your seventh power group. Um, And then with your right hand, that's your friends, family, acquaintances, people that aren't um, entrepreneurs, people that don't even wanna be, okay? And with those people, inspire them, find out what charges them up, talk about that, talk about what interests them, not what interests us. Don't try to change their mind, try to inspire them. And when they come to you, then you can change their mind, you can help them out. All right, last thing here, take this note as I'm pulling up to the golf course, is you need to start thinking not the not the what or the how, to grow your business or to solve this problem, but you need to start thinking the who. Now, I heard this probably two or three years ago. It's funny, I was boxing back and forth with my friend Joe McCall, an amazing entrepreneur, amazing real estate investor. I respect the heck out of him. And also when I was in Boise at Russell Brunson's office, this is something that he said that he learned at a mastermind that he's paying $100,000 a year to be in, which is kind of crazy, right? But it's not because one tweak in someone's business of that size um, can make you know 10 times 100,000 bucks, no problem. So what the, what he said was he was in this mastermind with with a guy named Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach. And I've gone through Dan's program before; it's amazing. And one thing that Dan said to Russell, and like I said, I heard this two or three years ago, but I didn't start to take it to heart until literally about six months ago, and even more so the past uh, month or so. Is he said in our business we like as entrepreneurs we're problem solvers. All right, we're problem solvers. We want to put our heads down. We want to solve that problem in front of us. There's this issue with leads or lead generation. There's this thing over here with how to dial in your website. There's this thing over here with having to learn how to uh, negotiate a contract or doing this, or there could be tasks in your normal day or your normal life that you just need to tackle that are there or someone needs to tackle. And for me, I know when I was having the toughest time as an entrepreneur, starting out one, two, three, four people, the first thing that would come to my mind whenever I would think about how to solve this problem was what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Right. And that's logical because that's the way that we grew our business. When we're a solo entrepreneur, pretty much everything out of the gate is something that you need to do. We have to go do this. I have to go do that. I have to go to the post office. I have to do this, whatever it is. But somewhere along the way, in order to be truly successful, you have to shift that mindset. It has to shift from what do I need to do in order to uh, over to who do I need to find who can do that or who do I need to find who knows how to do that? So we don't even have to know how to do everything. Okay. And that's one fallacy that we all have is we think that with every problem in front of us or every opportunity in front of us, we have to be the ones to know how to, or to find out how to do the thing to then train someone to then hire that person. And then they can do it. And I've done that before and it works, but it holds you back. You know, we're here at carrot. We're over 20 employees now uh, to serve our, our amazing clients. And we're going to be growing faster because I've shifted this mindset. I've gone gone from, okay, what do I need to do? Or how do we even do that? Like, here's one example on the marketing side. One thing that we're tackling on the marketing side is we need to dial in our YouTube marketing. We want to serve you guys better with better content. And there's some other things like that. And I was like going, okay, guys, how, what do we need to do? What's the strategy here? How do we figure out the strategy? Let's go learn it. Right. And then as soon as I had this locket in my brain, I'm going, oh damn, we don't need to know this stuff. I just need to find the person who does and hire them, right? Hire them as a consultant, hire them as an employee, doesn't matter. So we reached out to someone in my seventh power, that group, that one of my masterminds. And I said, Joe, you're amazing at YouTube. Can you please hop on a call with us and and show us what we need to do and maybe even can we hire you, okay? So now it's not us digging and having to figure out how to do this. It's us going, not what do we need to do or how do we need to do that? It's who do we need to find who knows the what or knows the how. If you're a solo entrepreneur, how do you apply this? 
You apply this by doing the energy audit. Go to oncarrot.com forward slash energy, oncarrot.com forward slash energy. Download my energy audit. That changed my life. I, I implement that every single quarter. I maybe missed a couple quarters. When I miss them, my life is not as good. I can tell you that as much. I have low energy days. But go to oncarrot.com forward slash energy, download my energy audit and follow the instructions on it and do it. Once you find the things that drain you, Okay. What your job is to do is circle one or two of those things every quarter and go, how do I get one or two of these off of my list and free up that six hours a week that they, that they cost me. And then don't go, how do I do this? Go, who can do that for me? Who can do that for me? Okay. Maybe you have to build a system that then you can put them in place for it. Maybe someone else can build the system or they just know the system that you can just hire them to do those things. Little by little, you're going to be growing your team. You're going to be working more within your unique abilities. You're going to be putting money that would have gone in your pocket over to hire people. But the thing is, when you're working within your unique abilities more, you're going to be doing things you love to do, which makes you more money. Like that's the funny thing that happens. There's this fallacy that we have of thinking that if I take this money that would have gone in my pocket and put it and put it in someone else's pocket to do these things I was doing, you know, maybe I'll just work harder. Let me add on an extra three, four, five, six, ten hours a week so I can do those things and I can make more money. The problem is you're losing money by doing that. You're losing energy by doing that. And I can guarantee you're losing life by doing that because you're stressing yourself out. You're working in low energy activities, okay? So more and more, every single quarter, work your way into high energy activities, energy giving activities. Go to oncarrot.com forward slash energy. Download that thing. Do that every single quarter. Print a pile of those things out. Do them every quarter, okay? And then don't ask, what can I do or how does it get done? The first question you should say is, who can I find who already knows the how and already knows the what? And then work with them. All right, I've got to get going. I love the heck out of you guys. I'm so pumped about the this second century of the podcast. Okay, we're in the second century. We're episode 101 right now. We've got some amazing interviews lined up for you. Joe McCall, buddy, I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing a call on how do you do exactly what I talked about here and find the who? How do you do exactly what I talked about here and find the who? Him and I are scheduling an episode. Look for that episode in your in your iTunes. You're going to be the first one to access it. If you go to iTunes or go to Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this and subscribe, okay, because we put those out on iTunes about a week before we put them out on our blog and email them out. You're going to get that episode. And how do you find the who that can do those things for you? How do you find the VAs? How do you find the right people? He's going to walk through his systems. And I'm going to walk through mine. All right. We've got some other amazing episodes with carrot customers who are crushing it in one way or another. And you're going to be able to basically swipe and deploy their models. Okay. And that's going to be so, so, so much fun. So go to oncarrot.com forward slash energy, get the energy on it, go subscribe, give us a rating and review on how you have found the, the carrot cast has impacted your life or business. And we've got some amazing real estate specific stuff coming up for you. One last quick announcement, carrotcamp.com, carrot camp. Uh, we sold out the, the spring carrot camp really, really fast. There's 13 or 14 amazing entrepreneurs coming out. We're going to have a great time. They're actually flying in today and tomorrow in here to Roseburg, Oregon. We're going to have a great, great time. Uh, but carrot camp September is going to be opening up at the end of this next week when we are published at the end of this week that you're going to be listening to this podcast that when it published live, we're going to be locking it down between 10 and 15 participants max. We already have a waiting list of people who want to be on it. And that is going to open up probably Friday of this week, uh, the, the week that we're wrapping up Carrot Camp Spring. And the people who take those spots are going to be the people who take those spots. And we're going to limit them, like I said, to about a dozen people. Amazing experience in our offices. Just go to carrotcamp.com, get on the wait list, and then make sure that you're opening those emails fast as the spots will fill up pretty quickly. All right. Have an amazing, empowering rest of the week. Find the who, not the what, not the how. And then also take those other lessons. Find your seventh power. So, so <clears throat> Excuse me, you're talking too fast, choking on myself. Find those people in your life who you can have the seventh power conversations with. And then also with those friends and family who aren't there yet or don't want to be there, please just enjoy them. Find out what they're passionate about and love on them more than anything else. Have an amazing week. We'll talk soon. 